thanks to God or whatever it is up there, the fact that we all survived. And we're going into an unknown future, but we're still all here. We still want wow, life, life as hope. John Lennon was brought to the emergency room at the Roosevelt site, St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital, this evening, shortly before 11 p.m. He was dead on arrival. Extensive resuscitative efforts were made, but in spite of transfusions and many procedures, he could not be resuscitated. I did uh, tell his wife that he was dead, and she was most distraught at the time and found it quite hard to accept. Well, the world tonight is also still finding it hard to accept that John Lennon is... ...as were John Lennon's many admirers in this city. Last night, as soon as the news was out, they gathered outside the entrance where he died. And they were still here this morning, turning the gates of this old apartment building into a kind of a shrine, where they brought their flowers, their tributes, and, of course, their music. John Lennon's friends here included a Paul McCartney look-alike. It uh, froze me. I came last night for uh, basically my own reasons to show support for whatever. It wasn't really morbid curiosity. And this morning, I think I was here curious to see how everyone else reacted. Symbolized hope, uh, a new life, a new beginning. He was a great, great, great man. Have you had any trouble before like this? The vigil here is continuing all day. This is Martin Bell in New York. In Britain, it took some time for the reality of the murder of John Lennon to sink in. There were no immediate vigils at any of the Beatles' landmarks, like Abbey Road or the famous pedestrian crossing, or the cavern in Liverpool where it all began. When the tributes did finally arrive, they were in the form of music. As a generation of Beatle fans were picking up their morning newspapers, the BBC, the national network, interrupted its normal format. Hours of Beatle and Lennon hits and interviews were to follow. Gradually, the awful truth was accepted on the street. And it's just shocking, that's all I can say. Shocking. I was wondering what, what, what ever reason a person would have to, to kill someone like that. You hear about things like, so Kennedy, it's the same kind of feeling, yeah. isn't it? Uh, take some time to get used to the idea. It's tied up with one's youth and all the rest of it. In Liverpool, outside the cavern, one solitary woman was crying. There's nothing left of the original site. It's a car park. But across the street, a new club with the old name, and Strawberry Fields, and Penny Lane, and George Martin, the man who produced most of the Beatles' hits and remembers John Lennon well. Uh, they were a tremendous team, and John was very much part of that team, and a very creative member of that team. His astringency um, lent a great deal to the sweetness of Paul. Then his thoughts on Lennon as a musician. Well, by the, by the standards of great men. Within minutes of the shooting, mourners began to... Perhaps the last one... ...coming to the regal old apartment building on the west side. John Lennon had been walking to the front door from a limousine with his wife, Yoko Ono, beside him. I'm Be damn steady, I say. Yeah, we're, we're in good commission. Thank you very much. It's great to talk to you. And it's not kindness. We, we want to sell the record and we want to talk to the English too. Lennon's former wife, Cynthia, still in England with their son, today described the killing as tragic, senseless and untimely, but would say no more. George Harrison, too, was stunned. Ringo Starr was on holidays and immediately flew to America. No. And co-writer in the group, Paul McCartney, has been locked away at his Sussex home. He said simply that he couldn't take it all in. The world had lost a great man. With those tributes comes the end of an era and the end of any hopes that the Beatles might ever perform again together. This is Mark Sulo in London for Seven National News. Here in Perth, record refuge for wealthy celebrities like Lauren Bacall and Gilda Radner and John Lennon. Now there was a crowd that jammed traffic and the mood kept changing strangely. 
quietly singing one moment, and then a feel of only light curiosity and chatting. And then a woman became hysterical. Photographers crowded her and climbed on cars. What must it have looked like from the apartments above? Yesterday, John Lennon gave what is now his last recorded interview. You have to give thanks to God or whatever it is up there, the fact that we all survived. We all survived Vietnam or Watergate or the, the tremendous upheaval of the whole world that's changed. He, he the, we were the hip ones in the 60s, but the world is not like the 60s. Anymore. The whole map's changed, and we're going into an unknown future, but we're still all here. We're still wild. There's life. There's hope. John today, news from Madrid to Moscow, the murder was condemned, and with it, by implication, American society. London's new standard editorialized, Lenin's meaningless murder is increasingly typical of New York and the United States in general, where the freedom to carry guns has brought forth monsters. Anything you really feel the federal government can do about such things as the shooting of John Lennon? Well, if there is, it should be done. At the site of Liverpool's once famous Cavern Club, now demolished to make way for a car park, there were no mourners. Sightseers passed by in numbers that were greater than usual, but the real John Lennon fans were across the road in the Grapes, the pub where the Beatles used to drink in the heady days of the early 60s. The news of John Lennon's death was broken to Merseyside by the local radio station, Radio City, and since early this morning they've been playing a succession of Lennon hits. This is John Lawrence in London. Another of John Lennon's former partners, Paul McCartney, spent the day at an Oxford Street studio saying, work is the best tonic. Police were standing by along with reporters as McCartney finished. What was your reaction to the death of John Lennon? I was very shocked, you know. It's terrible news. What were you recording today? Um, I was just listening to some stuff, you know, I just didn't want to sit at home. Why? Well, I didn't feel like it. What time did you hear the news? This morning sometime. Very early. Yeah. Don't know, yeah? Drag, isn't it? Okay, cheers. Hello, Hello, guys. Hello, guys. The survivor of the most successful songwriting team in history also said, John will be remembered for his unique contribution to art, music, and world peace. Another former Beatle, George Harrison, was said to be in a state of shock at his secluded mansion in the English countryside. Beatlemania, London, 1962. Of the four, Lennon was the rebel, and it was his words that made their music. Well, she loves you. She loves you. The phenomenon that inspired hysteria amongst teenage fans across the globe was cradled in the Cavern Club in Liverpool, near where John himself was born. By the early 60s, the group was travelling worldwide and at every airport, the same scenes of uncontrolled adulation greeted them. As they moved from concert to concert, police had to be on hand at every venue as often as not to carry away the victims of fainting and exhaustion. By 1965, all four were virtually members of the establishment, as loved by royalty as by their fans. Even the Prime Minister of the day was on Christian name terms at the Variety Club Awards. Uh, I'd just like to say the same as the others, thanks for the Purple Hearts. <laughs> With desperate fans clambering up the gates of Buckingham Palace, the climax of their recognition came with the award of the MBE to each of them. But Lennon, whose rebellious streak was to find greater expression now, was to hand his medal back in protest at the Vietnam War. So, the same year, Lennon made his classic utterance about the Beatles having become more popular than Jesus Christ, a view he felt had been misunderstood. I wasn't knocking it or putting it down, I was just saying it for the fact. And it sort of did his true special more for England than here. You know, I'm not saying that we're better or greater or comparing us with Jesus Christ as a person or God as a thing or whatever it is. You know, I just said what I said and it was wrong or was taken wrong and now it's all this. It was perhaps in search of some spiritual dimension that the Beatles flew off to India. In the tranquility of an Indian garden, John Lennon walked apparently finally in peace from the years of Beatlemania. 
His time with the Maharishi evidently inspired his work for a time. So too did his increasing feeling of frustration with the world as he saw it. We're going to stay in bed for seven days, sort of, instead of having a Probably private honeymoon. It's a private protest. For the violence that's going in the world, you see. To say, uh... Be sure that instead of making war, it's better to just stay in bed. Let's stay in bed for spring. And you know. grow your hair. Yes, For yes. peace. Let it, let it grow till uh, peace comes, you know. Bono's arrival on the scene led some to believe that she was to be the eventual cause of the Beatles breaking up. But in truth, Lennon seems to have found in her much of what he'd missed in earlier life, with the early tragic death of his mother and the breakup of his family. So, like the others, Lennon was to go his own way, exploring the themes dear to him in numbers like My Mummy's Dead and Working Class Hero. Five years passed in which he produced little music, but in which he and Yoko started a family. And then, a month ago, this album, with which now he will have to be remembered. Our life together is so precious. Together we have grown. We have grown. John Lennon was born in 1940 in Liverpool. Early on, after his father deserted the family, his mother handed over the chores of raising him to her sister, and Lennon was raised by his aunt. The group that eventually became the Beatles, then called the Beat Boys, without Ringo Starr, had their first big break in Hamburg, Germany in 1961, after which came success in Liverpool, after which manager Brian Epstein signed on the group, signed on Ringo Starr, and what followed was a worldwide phenomenon, Beatle mania. You know, Beatles bring joy into the world, the, the happiness. We forget our kids when we hear Beatle records. Even parents who at first viewed the Beatles with fear and dismay came to accept them. Hit album after hit album, each fresh and inventive, several hit movies, that was part of Beatlemania. Also hairstyles, clothes, and their irreverent, cheeky approach to life. John thought of the name Beatles, and he'll tell you about it now. <laughs> uh, it, just, it means Beatles, doesn't it, you know? If that's just a name, you know, like shoe. By the time John Lennon made a movie without the Beatles, the 1967 How I Won the War, he had decided he wanted to go out on his own. He divorced wife Cynthia, mother of his first son, in 1968, and the following year married his widow, Yoko Ono. Together they raised many an eyebrow with their lifestyle and their vigorous anti-war stance. All we are saying is give peace a chance. Let me take you the music of John Lennon and the Beatles remains vibrant. Music rich in creativity and diversity. Innocent music of the early days, drug culture songs, puzzling songs, mystical songs, message songs, songs from the fury of the streets to the lullaby whisper of the nursery. Dennis Cunningham for CBS News. to present a limited boxed edition of The Beatles Collection. I want to be a man. Thirteen albums from the beginning to the end, including rarities with two tracks never before released on LP. The Beatles Collection. From the moment their doors opened today, most record stores reported a rush on John Lennon records and Beatles music generally. By lunchtime, many stores had sold out, and WEA Records, which distribute Lennon's latest album, said sales had more than doubled overnight. So great is the rush to buy John Lennon's music that record companies simply can't keep up with the demand. Each day, 16,000 copies of Lennon's latest album, Double Fantasy, are being pressed in anticipation of sales reaching an all-time high. For the Sydney people who knew him, Lennon's death hit hard. Promoter Jack Neary was closely associated with him during the Beatles' Australian tour in 64. Neary remembers John Lennon as the Beatle who decided not to disappoint thousands of fans who'd been waiting for hours in the rain at Sydney Airport for their arrival. He said, what's the matter, sport? And I said, well, uh this is what's happened, it's teeming with rain, I know, but you won't get wet. And the police has asked if you will go around 
on this tabletop truck and wave to the people who've waited there all night in the rain, otherwise there'll be a riot. And he said, come on, fellas, that's what we're there for, and out they went. And uh, they were great. They got drowned, of course. Like Jack Neary, Lennon's Australian fans will remember him through the music he left behind. But the feelings of public outrage at his murder haven't taken long to surface. And it's clear already that John Lennon is a man who won't be quickly forgotten. Ian Ross, National 9 News. We won't see the likes again of the... The next song we'd like to do is another one of our records. I think it's one you probably know best. You probably know it best. It's called She Loves You. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, 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 yeah. When you've lost your love, well, I saw her yesterday. She's she's thinking of, and she told me what to say. It isn't hard. 